We're in the time of the days of awe for our Jewish siblings, a time when the book of life opens and closes. And sometimes during this time of the, the 10 days of reflection for our Jewish friends or those who celebrate as Unitarian Universalists, it's a time of, of rehashing the past, but really it's about the sweetness of the new year to come. And it brings forth questions of how one might want to guide themselves, of creating a vision for the future. Even this morning, it was so beautiful. I was telling my daughter, Charlotte, that she had something to look forward to in the nursery of maybe some new special snack. And there I was to learn that she was going to get to have apples and honey, one of the ways that that in the Jewish tradition, people wish themselves sweetness in the Jewish New Year, saying Shana Tova. However we see ourselves theologically or with our various credos, we are invited in this time to be inspired to live a religious life, to do religion as Unitarian Universalists as if our vision for the future mattered, as if this world matters. That the role of religion in the 21st century is to be a part of a future that acknowledges our duty to our progeny, our future generations. So if you don't like the word religious, say mindful, say spiritual, say ethical, But for goodness sake, whatever that life is you're living, allow it to allow you to live as a blessing, a blessing to the future. And if I know anything about Unitarian Universalists, that is what we are trying to do. Yes? And that we are trying to view our reality as something that is green-centered. Look at these windows. There's no stained glass. You see nature all around you because we care. We want to be nature-centered instead of viewing nature or earth simply as a backdrop to human drama. So this vision that I speak of comes from a, a wise person, well, from plenty of people, but Michael Dowd is an evangelist for teaching our greater story about how we as human beings are part of the universe made conscious of itself, as inspired by the story that was just spoken about from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who, by the way, was inspired so deeply and mentored by Carl Sagan. Michael Dowd, he travels with his wife, Connie Barlow, who is a scientist, And he had a conversion story in which he learned about the story of evolution and realized that this was a meta-narrative, a greater story that needed to be shared. And since then, they live in a van, (laughs) and they travel from place to place. Have have you ever hosted them here in Naples? Yes. Okay, good. Well, next time they come through, they're coming, they're coming to Fort Myers. I'll make sure that, that you all as leaders and Reverend Tony are aware. It's such a powerful story that they tell. And what Michael Dowd talks about is having a legacy consciousness. And this is a powerful time to be considering legacy, to be thinking about what we are leaving to the future, to think about when you die, what will you have done in the world to create a beautiful future for all, for human generations, and also for all of those future species, the flora and the fauna, for the health of the land and the water. Oh my, the water. Now sometimes embracing this idea of legacy consciousness, and I'll speak for myself, can lead to a sense that I am not enough. Which is why I wanted to begin all of this with the reading of returning again to the beauty of yourself and the reminder as... DeGrasse Tyson reminds us that we are stardust, that we have a spark within each of us, and we find our own ways to let it shine. So you, each and every one of you as sparks, has a way to live into a legacy consciousness. And it is for you, 
perhaps in the invitation of the high holy days when so many of our Jewish friends are taking stock of their lives, to think about that method in which you will live out your light. For the Jewish New Year, there's a sense of turning, of hashivenu, a returning to our best practices and our best selves. So what does that mean in a world of religious worldviews and philosophies that sometimes I have witnessed that it takes human beings further away from the reality and consequences of their behavior, our behavior. I'm a human too, as it turns out. (laughs) So what I would like to say with the power of the pulpit is that we need less viewpoints that make the earth a resource to exploit while we follow our bliss and manifest our reality based in a consumer culture that has us thinking we can buy our way out of ruining our earth as long as there are enough carbon And it can evolve and continue generative and beautiful processes without us. And, as Annie Dillard reminds us, quote, we're here to abet creation and witness to it to notice each thing so that each thing gets noticed. Together we notice not only each mountain shadow and each stone on the beach, but we notice each other's beautiful face and complex nature so that creation need not play to an empty house. So here have we gathered the house to witness to creation, the creative and growing complexity of the universe that will continue without us if need be. But as Robert Louis Stevenson said, sooner or later we all sit down to a banquet of consequences. (laughs) So here's the news that we probably all know. Climate chaos is inevitable. Stronger storms desertification, shifts in arable land and habitable land, sea levels up 20 to 40 feet above current levels. Our toxic legacy means chemical and nuclear waste contamination of our shorelines will be all pervasive. The population issues guarantee drought, famine, war, disease in a post-antibiotic age. Infrastructures will likely collapse, and mass migrations of people, plants, and animals will completely change our planet. (laughs) The age of the Industrial Revolution will have its hulky, rusty collapse. And the deluded notion of perpetual progress will heave its last breath. And what a sadness to think of humans no longer bearing witness that my daughter's children could witness the end of days and catastrophes beyond imagination simply because our generations couldn't organize our power as people in the face of organized money. What a bunch of As Michael Dowd reminds us, our instincts as human beings can sometimes kill us. And we avoid death in a society that puts primacy on constant growth and progress. We lose the deeper learnings of how death can make space for new life. So, in this time, with the Jewish New Year having happened, people say an abbreviated greeting in Hebrew, they say, Shana Tova. Happy New Year. And it more deeply means, may your name be written in the book of life. So I guess the story is that the good folks automatically get their names in the book of life, and then the evil ones, you know, they're auto-scribed into the book of death. And the rest of us schmucks have 10 days to get it back on track, (laughs) to correct ourselves, to take stock and get right with life. This new year is like the world's birthday. It's a time to start fresh and 10 days of witnessing human frailty. One part is witnessing the reality of death. Even embracing death to say yes to life. 
Yes to human possibility. Yes to changing the legacy that our generation leaves to future kiddos. This quote's from Roy Ben Huda, a Jewish lecturer and blogger at Columbia University. The great shofar is sounded, tells us an 11th century rabbi in Mainz. And he says, a still small voice is heard. This day, even angels are alarmed, seized with fear and trembling as they declare, the day of judgment is here, for even the hosts of heaven are judged. This day, all who were on the earth pass before you as a flock of sheep. And like a shepherd who gathers his flock, bringing them under his staff, you bring everything that lives before you for review. You determine the life and decree the destiny of every creature. On Rosh Hashanah it is written, and on Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many shall leave this world, and how many shall be born into it, and who shall live, and who shall die? End quote. So, I suppose the burning question is, are you in the book of life? <laughs> but let's not get literal here. Let's think with, as the, the Buddhist activist Joanna Macy asks us, to think with deep time eyes. You get it? Deep time? Thinking about that bigger, greater story of the universe? How do we inscribe the names of the generations present today in the book of life so that we can create life-giving and life-loving conditions for the future? Some of the Jewish teachings tell us it's the three T's, Teshuva, Tefillah, and Zeraka. Teshuva is a returning. It means revealing and rediscovering a person's true holy nature. And as Michael Dowd lectures on his Grace Limits series, which is all free on YouTube, and I welcome you, it's a wonderful way to spend a fact. We are stardust, each of us sparkling. Return to that. And the second T, tefillah, is your connection with God or the holy or the sacred, that what I call the network of hands and hearts that's greater than the sum of its parts. Connection to the universe, to this greater story, this action of moving outward in awareness and connection. As our seventh principle reveals, we are part of a an interdependent web of life. And that we can move ourselves out, out of the center of the universe. And then Zadaka, which starts with a T. It's often mistranslated as charity, but more like, as some of my rabbi friends tell me, it actually is more about justice and righteousness. And that this congregation has so many ways that you live into doing that justice work. I've been hearing about what you've been up to. That what you do isn't just charity. That some of the things you do are engaging in partnerships that will turn you, that will change you, and open you to new learnings of how to be. And that turning isn't always comfortable, is it? Those, those awkward conversations that are actually sacred and generative and beautiful. In our interfaith justice ministry in Lee County, we often talk about how without tension, there is no change. So whether you're in congregational life or you're reaching out in partnerships in the community, whenever you notice that there may be tension or disagreement, that never happens in congregational life. So it must be outside these walls. Be curious about how that tension can lead to change, can lead to being part of a richer legacy. The hope is that these practices bring the practitioner closer to one who might be inscribed in the book of life. 
and the days of awe are a great time of reckoning. And as we embrace the theme of vision, which our congregation also is embracing, the Jewish holy days invite us to a great homecoming, a homecoming to the reality of human possibility. We can have a mutually enhancing relationship with nature. And as a result, of course, it means we have a loving relationship with ourselves, with all our relations. And that we can adopt a legacy consciousness and see that our deaths are never in vain. And so all are born and all shall die. May your name be inscribed in the book of life.